My wife, Laura, and I started our homesteading journey almost two decades ago. And for the decade before that, we went and worked and volunteered on other people's homesteads. So today's video is gonna be about some of the most essential things I've learned in almost 20 years of learning how to grow food and live off the land and things that I wish I knew when I was getting started. In my hopes that it's gonna help folks that are either brand new to living in the countryside and trying to learn how to homestead, or if you dream of one day moving out into the country and living off the land, this video is for you. By the way, this channel is called Chris Outdoors, and it's all about helping people deepen their relationship to the natural world and their understanding of ecology, as well as develop skills around self-reliance, growing food, hunting, foraging, things of that nature. If you like that kind of content, you can subscribe to the channel and check out chrisoutdoors.ca. But let's start chatting homesteading lessons. So one of the best parts about the homestead, obviously, is being able to eat food off of the land year round. As you can see, it's winter right now, and we still eat from the garden almost every single day of the year. <laughs> And when people are first getting started, you know, that's often the reason, you know, to be able to eat from the land, it's quite dreamy, doing things like this, like harvesting your own rainwater, being self-sufficient, uh, it's pretty amazing. But I gotta say, homesteading is also really hard work. And a lot of people don't really realize how much work it actually is. And it can be really intimidating because things go wrong, you get tired, it's hard. Uh, and probably one of my favorite pieces of advice that I, ever have learned from someone. Now, regardless of whether you're a Tony Robbins guy or not, uh, one of my favorite quotes from him is that people often overestimate what they can do in a year and they underestimate what they can do in a decade. And that's definitely <laughs> been our journey as homesteaders here. The first couple of years here, we tried to do everything all at once. So we built this greenhouse right here. We got our chickens and we got our chicken coop back behind me here. So behind me, this was mostly forest and overgrown. So we literally cleared all of this. We had to build soil right from start. We did this all in the first couple of years. It was a ton of work and we got very little food. We got very little return on our time. It was exhausting. As Tony Robbins has kind of said with that quote, um, over the years, things start to compound, kind of like interest in a bank account. And now 12 years forward, uh, we put in the same amount, maybe even less work than we put in in the early days, and we produce way more food uh, to the point that we're eating food every single season of the year. So the next thing that I'd highly, highly recommend is one, don't feel like you need to do everything. Create hybrid food systems, especially around your meat. And then the other one is that animals, out of all the things on the homestead, take up the most amount of time and work. So you might want to consider how you want to do that. We made a rule after trying to take on too much at once that we were only going to introduce one animal to the homestead at a time. And then over time we realized that actually we want to be able to go away on vacation sometimes, go and see family for a few nights, and larger animals just doesn't work for us because they just tie you to the homestead 24-7. But smaller animals are two favorites, so we now have rabbits. Uh, and we have chickens. Don't worry, this guy's not going in the stew pot. He's our breeder, our little buddy here. Um, but they're incredibly efficient. But the, what's amazing about rabbits and chickens is we can actually set them up with water and food for quite a few days. So we can still leave the homestead for a couple of days, come back, uh, and they're gonna be fine when we get back. Now, what do I mean by hybrid food systems? So we grow rabbits and chickens. You can grow a lot of rabbits in a very small space. And another amazing thing is they help you build soil through all the manure. So we take the manure from the rabbits, we put them in the soil, it helps us grow better vegetables. But then we take our rabbit meat and we actually trade it with local farmers. So we're able to trade our rabbit meat for lamb, for pork, for chicken. And then we will buy a little bit from other local farmers as well. So don't think that you need to do everything. Remember in the olden days, uh, farmers were part of larger communities. And often there was big teams working on farms. It's just not realistic to do everything yourself. So if you can set up systems of trade with other farmers in your area and you grow more of one thing like rabbits or eggs and then trade those for other things, it can be, make your life a lot happier and get you more self-sufficient quicker. And the third part of our hybrid food system is actually wild meat. So both hunting and fishing. So we raise meat, then we take some of that meat and we trade it to other farmers, which allows us not to have to do so much, or we buy meat from other local farmers, and then we actually go out and sustainably harvest food from the land. And I gotta say, you know, out of all the things that I've done on my journey, I never thought I was gonna become a hunter, but it's been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. There's just nothing like going out on the land uh, with a bow or a firearm and being able to harvest food and bring it home. I think it's incredibly sustainable if it's done right, and it's completely changed who I am as a human being and my relationship with the natural world. If you're interested in learning out to, learning how to hunt, uh, I'd encourage you to check out our newsletter and our course and community around hunting called The Hunter's Journey at thehuntersjourney.com. 
So building on that point, one of the things that I really wish I'd done differently is just not taking on so much at once and committing to one big project per year. So this is the other garden I referenced a moment ago up above. So this was actually forest, uh, young forest that used to be a potato field as part of an old homestead. I came up here, I cut down the trees, I started trying to turn it all into a garden. If you look back there, you'll see a handful of spruce and uh, pine trees. We actually bought those when they were this small. We bought, I think about a hundred of them with this dream that, oh, we're gonna start a tree nursery and we're gonna have a garden and we're gonna have animals. And we got totally overwhelmed because it was just too much. We had the tree nursery. We also cleared all of this land here to make a garden. And you'll notice this part we kept open, but that part's totally grown back. So not only did I spend a ton of time clearing forest and trying to prep soil to grow in, but then I let it go and now I have to do it all over again. Not very efficient. I should have just waited a couple of years to clear this garden in the first place and focused on the area around the greenhouse. So don't take on too much at once. We never started the tree nursery because the trees got super big and we just realized that wasn't actually what we wanted to do. So now I've been digging them up and transplanting them on other parts of the property. Not the end of the world, but a lot of wasted time and even wasted money because we paid for those saplings. The next thing I would encourage you to focus on if you're actually serious about self-reliance and actually wanting to get to some degree of being able to uh, support yourself from the food that you grow is focus on high yielding crops and perennial crops when you're getting started. You know, all of the annual vegetables like uh, lettuce and tomatoes and broccoli, all of them are a ton of fun to grow, but annuals are a lot of work. You gotta start them as seedlings, you gotta transplant them, you gotta tend them, uh, you gotta prep the soil. Um, I'm not saying you don't grow them, but I'm saying they're a lot of work. And if you start with perennials early on or focus on high yielding annuals, you're gonna actually reach that higher level of self-sufficiency sooner on, and then you can focus on those other ones. So for example, here, I'm sitting beside a high bush blueberry plant today. We planted these actually in our first couple of years, and that's one thing I'm glad we did in the first couple of years, because the blueberries are almost no work once you plant them. Uh, every couple of years, I do a little bit of tending to the soil. Uh, once a year, I come in and prune them, but pruning perennial plants is, and perennial trees is one of my favorite things to do. And we get a lot of food off of these highbush blueberries now that they're established with very little work compared to what we put into our tomatoes or broccoli. I'm gonna go show you my other favorite crop right now. Now of all the things I grow on our farm, this one actually took our self-reliance and the amount of food we grow uh, ahead the furthest, the quickest. It was a total game changer because we're able to grow an entire year worth in a small amount of space, and that's learning how to grow mushrooms. So I highly recommend you make mushrooms one of the earlier on crops that you explore. And there's a few amazing things about mushrooms. So mushrooms are, for one, perennial crops if you grow them outside on logs. So in a very small space, these logs will produce year after year. They actually flush twice a year with shiitake mushrooms. Then we freeze some of them, we eat a ton fresh, and we also dry them and we put them in soups and stews all winter long. We also grow them fresh indoors all year long as well. So mushrooms are a total game changer as a crop. And what I love about them again is that there's a very low amount of work put into them for how much yield you actually get from them. So do those things early on in your homesteading days, reap the rewards like that compounding interest, and then you can focus on those other kind of more fun crops that you wanna grow later on in your journey. We also supplement our growing mushrooms with mushrooms that we forage from the forest as well. And we do a lot of foraging. And again, if you forage, you're working with nature. It also means less that you need to do in the land and less land you need to clear so you can be more sustainable that way as well on your impact on the land. If you're interested in learning how to forage for mushrooms, how to identify them in the wild, and how to grow mushrooms both indoors and out, I actually have a course called The Mushroom Course you can check out as well. And if you enter YouTube 30, you'll get $30 off that at themushroomcourse.com. I'm also putting the links below, or you can go to my website, chrisoutdoors.ca, for all the things that I'm referencing here. Now, this is one that I actually feel like we did right, and I'm so thankful that we did. And that's going and learning from other farmers and homesteaders before getting started, and going and taking a permaculture design course often called the PDC. Now, during the COVID pandemic, I live in a rural area and we had a ton of people move up here from the city, buy land with the hopes of growing food, living in the country. Jump forward a couple of years, a lot of them aren't here. And a lot of people came out with this dream and idealism of growing all their own food and chopping wood and living on the land, but they didn't know what they were doing. And it's totally overwhelming. And it actually was more stressful potentially than living in the city in the first place. So start off slow. And if you can, one, go take a permaculture design course. Uh, it's called the PDC. I, I recommend 
recommend two schools in particular that I've worked with. One is called Earth Activist Training. They're out in California, but they run a, they run a course in BC. They run one in California and they also have an online version. And there's also another school called Verge Permaculture that I highly recommend as well. I'll put the links for those down below as well. There's also something called Willing Workers on Organic Farms. And it's a volunteer program where you can actually go and stay for room and board on a farm. I highly recommend. I did this for years, bouncing around to farms, volunteering for other people. So when we started our farm, I actually kind of knew what I was doing already. And I can see that if I didn't know anything, we might not be here either. Now, one thing you might learn about in your permaculture class or in the study of permaculture is this idea of forest gardening. And it's actually an ancient way of working with the forest to produce food. So for example, we have this wetland growing beside our house here, and we've actually been planting all kinds of native species in the wetland. Now this wetland had been disturbed by people, so we're actually creating things like these rose hips here that are actually good food for the birds, but we can also harvest these for food and medicine as well. So we have things like fiddleheads planted in here, elderberries, uh, aronia berries, uh, wild leeks, all kinds of good wild edible and medicinal plants. So we're actually supporting the ecology of the forest here. We're creating food for other wildlife, but we're also to har able to harvest from these perennial vegetables for ourselves. So learning how to forage and tend the wild spaces is a great way to supplement your diet on the homestead and again work with nature. It's a beautiful relationship to have. The other thing I'll just mention on that, if you want to check out some wild forage foods, check out our uh, wild food business, wildmuskoka.com, and by purchasing stuff through there, you're also supporting content like this coming out on the internet. So I hope you found some value in that video. I wish I had watched something like this when I was first starting out and that I'd followed some of those rules myself. Uh, I just want to remind you that if you're interested in growing mushrooms, we, you can get $30 off our mushroom course. It's themushroomcourse.com. The link's also below. And if you enter YouTube 30, you'll get $30 off. We also have the hunting community and mentorship for people that want to learn about ethical and responsible hunting for food. Uh, that's at thehuntersjourney.com. And all of those you can check out over at chrisoutdoors.ca. And if you like this content, then I encourage you to uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Or if you're already a homesteader and you want to share some your top tips for new homesteaders, share those in the comments as well.